this music? What about this music? And this music? They were all written by Mr. Ed Kalehoff. Ed is a massive composer in the history of American television, and his work is woven into the fabric of our lives. This series was conducted in the spring of 2020 via Instagram, and the audio and video quality do reflect that format. However, the words and insights of these guests are still priceless. So we're talking to Ed Kalehoff today. Ed is a prolific composer of music. His work spans almost five decades and includes a massive catalog, including compositions for iconic TV shows such as The Price is Right, Daredevil, Family Feud, Monday Night Football, ABC World News Tonight, Nightline, and a huge sum of other music written for everything from local television promo bumpers to major franchises. His BMI catalog alone, and I looked this up, shows 1,558 songs and cues, and he's still going full blast. Blast. And that's why you don't have time for Instagram, because you're just busy. <laughs> and, right. and I have to say that, you know, I was listening to all this music today, this music and this morning, smiling, and I have to say, without a doubt, I've been hearing your music for most of my life. Uh-oh, I'm not that old. <laughs> Yeah, well, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, my word. So you were okay. born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi, and your yeah. father was a musician. Yes, he was. Pretty pretty much the South. Well, also, we, we, we had a, a huge dose of, uh, of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. And uh, he was from there. My mother is Mississippi. And uh, the rest of my sisters, my two sisters, are still in Mississippi. Uh-huh. Uh they were everywhere and uh you know it was a it was a wonderful uh wonderful north south uh life you know raising and jumping and you know biting and scratching. And, so, and your father played he he was a keyboard player or what did he play? He was uh organ more well of course keys but pipe organ a, a very very large pipe organ guy you know the the swell the great the uh antiphonal keyboards you know four six keyboards uh i saw him play the john wanamaker organ in philadelphia wow and yeah so i mean he was he was good and he and he had big choirs so um that's where i got my uh appreciation of the 32 foot diapasons and the and and the huge bottom. I love you know the the bass. You know where the 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 stone church would vibrate. You couldn't even hear those low frequencies. You know, <laughs> so I still I still love the low bottoms. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, so to speak. So what? So what were you listening to growing up? Because the the music that you were listening to when you were younger has, as we know, has a lot to do with who we identify with as musicians Yeah. when we start working. Well, I just mentioned, you know, the, the, the church, you know, the, okay, the, the, all of the, the, the classic big stuff, the Hallelujah Chorus, the uh, Messiah, all of the big, the big handle, all of the big Chopin, Mendelssohn, all of those pieces on the classical pipe organ wow. and my and my dad also was a master at the Hammond he loved the Hammond and he was he was the official organist of the White House what? Uh, really? yeah yeah he, he he played gigs in the White House and he and he, and he had a Hammond with bolt uh, 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 big uh, bolt fittings to bolt the Hammond to the uh, Missouri, so he'd be on with the war. He'd be out with the uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the drinking parties during the war. Oh, it was, oh, was crazy. I, okay, then fast forward to uh, Mississippi mm -hmm. and the Delta, the blues, uh, the uh, early days of rock and roll, Buddy Holly, uh, Ray Charles, uh, Ray was in, in the, of course, there was a lot of segregation back then when we were young and, uh, but I met Ray and we, we had a little record 
and that was uh, out, and uh, we opened for the Chitlin. That was called the Chitlin Circuit, you know, with wow. the Ray, and uh, so and 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 Huey Lewis, you know, you know the uh, Huey, uh, Huey Piana Smith and uh, the. Uh, the clowns, I think they called them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they had, I think, Poison Ivy. That might have been their record. I, I don't know. There's a lot of them that came through Jackson and through New Orleans, and uh, so we would go to the black churches and grab a tambourine and learn the gig from them. Wow. And uh, you know, so there was Buddy Holly, Chuck Berry. He was through there big influence on me, you know, with his guitar play and then some good friends, uh, Lane Cameron, great guitar player. He still plays the same great licks. And the luckiest thing that I had was, uh, uh, a fellow Carson Witz who's no longer with us, but he was a keyboard guy. So I had guitar and keyboard that I loved. And, uh, we would, we would meet as kids. We had motorcycles, little motorcycles. We'd run around Jackson on, and yet we would always get together and say, hey, man, I got a new lick. I got to show you the new lick. And, and I mean, what a way to, to, to have friends that, you know, I mean, everybody was, you know, everybody was cool. Jackson was Mayberry. You know, it, it was just a wonderful open town, and uh, there was no segregation for us because we loved – the uh, the black station in town was WOKJ, the black spot on your radio dial, and that's what we listened to. Wow! So it was, I mean, it was, a, and, and you know, transfer that back to Philadelphia and the Musical Academy, and um, one of the the best guitarists I've ever met was uh, uh, Jeff Mirnoff. We went to the same guitar teacher in Philadelphia. Um, uh, Sandoli, I think his name was. He was a crazy guy. Wow. Uh, yeah, and Jeff, of course, became one of my favorite guys. I mean, what a wonderful guy. He and Jimmy Bones and, uh, you know, just some great guitar players. Uh, uh, Andy Schwartz is now at the Union, but he was he was fantastic. Yeah. So that was in New York. So at any rate, that's what the influences were, and I kind of covered the – the big names in my life of the guys that gave me shots and uh, traded licks, and we would we had a great time doing that, you know. So it was uh, more fun than we we're allowed to have, you know. Man, and then you figured out that you wanted to write for you wanted to write for picture, be it TV or film, and yeah. I, I I read somewhere that you you had designs on being a film composer at some point. Oh yeah, very. very I'm a very frustrated film guy. I I actually said. You know, what are you going to do in your high school book? I'm going to go to Hollywood and write music <laughs> for movies. So I'm in Hollywood, <laughs> Florida, unfortunately, but not, not California. But, I, you know, I got out there and I had so many opportunities to, to join the, uh, the guys, the real guys, Henry Mancini and uh, uh, Hugo Montenegro and, Quincy Jones and uh, uh, Newman, Alfred Newman and, and Bernstein, those guys. And, and they, they all wanted the Moog. See, I got, I got back into the Moog in Philadelphia with, uh, uh, with Dr. Robert Moog. Who yeah, was, I want to know about the Moog because yeah. your Moog was a, was a Series 55, right? Yeah, I guess I mean I I, it, I called it a Moger Foger. I know, and, I saw that, and you coined the phrase that they then used for for yeah uh, <laughs> Moog pedals later. Yeah, well he he came into the he he would stop into the studio uh, all the time when he was in New York. There were a bunch of uh, through the years more and more Moogs, and he'd come and fix them, tune them up. But we were we were very good friends from the early days in Philly. And uh, we had one of those punch out things that would, which could spell, you know, with a little tape would make white letters. Di Dynex. Yeah, and and I so I, I said, Moger Foger. And uh, you know, you know, musicians always like 
things that sound good or cool. You know, we, we always wanted things that sounded good. Right. So, uh, I did that and put it on the, uh, the fixed bank filter. Yeah. I and saw, I saw the video of you talking about it. <laughs> so he came in one day and he said, Moger Voger. What's that, Ed? I said, that's you, man. <laughs> so, so anyway, back, back in the early days, when they did that Schaefer beer commercial, they, I was doing some, you know, some ads and some, some, I think that's how you kind of break into New York. You, you start doing some commercials and, uh, they, they, they had me doing a commercial, you know, Schaefer's the one beer to have, right? That one. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? You're shooting me like I'm somebody put my name there. And, and I, and I want you to put the Moog name. And yeah. I called, I, I said, Bob, can we use your name? He said, sure. I mean, he was such a, a supportive man. So they did scan casting and animation on his name and my name. Ed Caleb at the Moog. So anyway, he let me use his name. So I said, man, that's your name, Moger Foger. So he said, can I use it? I said, yeah. So he it started showing up a couple of years later. So that I think he gave it to some of the torches. He said, I am a Moger Foger. So that's, that's, anyway, that was funny. <laughs> His daughter, Michelle, loved that, too. She said, yeah, I remember when he walked in with that. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so anyway, it was fun. So, yeah. Anyway. How, how did you get into the Moog? Because it was quite a, quite a serious instrument and required a lot of knowledge about patching and synthesis. And oh, well, when I was three years old, I would drop my trucks and run to the piano and, 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 and climb up on a bench, and I was fascinated with keys, you know, black and white keys. And I never lost that curiosity, uh, really, about, about keys. I still do. I mean, I still, I still love grands, nine-foot Bosendorfers and, and concert grands, and I think there's an 11-foot Bosendorfer a friend of mine has. Um, it just, you know, just wonderful pianos with the extended C. I just get excited with them. So I went to the musical academy and uh, my mother saw to it that I got into to uh, Philadelphia for my lessons. And I went two years to the musical academy. I studied classical music for a year. Because I was able to finish high school in three years. I took, I took a year and learned how to play, you know, uh, the Bach two parts and some three part inventions and some Beethoven and Chopin and some Debussy, you know, the things to get me in the school. And uh, I left after two years for Mississippi, the University of Southern Mississippi, because the Swingle singers were down there. Remember them with the Bach? Oh, yeah. Yes. And and I fell in love with that. I said, man, that is genius. And, of course, Walter Carlos, Wendy Carlos, had, had mm -hmm. done the switched on. But, well, no, that was after that. They did that, that the ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba you know, and with yeah. the walking bass and the brush drums. Yeah. And they were Mobile, Alabama. Ward and Ebb Swingle. And I, I went down to Mississippi and formed a jazz choir and we started winning all the jazz festivals. Everybody was like doing, you know, Horace Silver and, 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 you know, a trumpet and a, and a tenor sax and a, and a combo. And I walked in with 16 singers and, uh, went in and, 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 and did vocal things. Cause I grew up with my dad with the choirs. So I loved the singers. And we'd have a jazz kind of groove thing going. And we, so we won a lot of jazz festivals. But then I went up into the Northeast where the money was to make a living in the nightclubs. <laughs> and I discovered, I went in and I, I was playing the, the, uh, the Cherry Hill outside of Philadelphia nightclubs because I, I knew people there and I got in a band great band and uh, 
I went by the school, and and actually Jimmy, the uh, the 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 guard and custodian of the there were three or four buildings of the musical academy, and he gave me a key to the lab. And I said, I want to learn that. And and a good friend of mine, Dwayne Hitchings, of course, is, he's in Nashville now. He wrote, Do You Think I'm Sexy? The, uh, you know, the... Uh, Stuart song. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, 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 was, he was with uh, Buddy Miles, and he was with... Uh, 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 oh, I mean, he, he, he wrote a lot of hits for Jocko and, and you know... You know Michael Jackson, and 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 yeah. and he's still writing. I mean, he's he's. I just talked to him the other day, and he fell in love with the Moog, and we both fell in love with the Moog. And I said, I mean, I got a key, and we did some music together. And our teacher at that time was was doing little blurbs and 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 burps and tweets on the synth. And and of course we 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 found music, you know it could do a bass, it could do a melody, one note at a time, but you could play. Yeah. So the first commercial I did on it was a thing for Subaru automobiles. They were importing them into the into the country, and we we didn't have a drum, so. I said, Dwayne, you'll you, you'll do the hi hat with your mouth, and I'll and I'll whisper sort of the brushes with my voice, and and I said, <laughs> uh, Subaru, Subaru, <laughs> and and Dwayne would do the backbeat with a Subaru, Subaru, <laughs> and, and so we had this wonderful theme, right? Infectious to bring the Subaru cars into the United States from Japan. Well, it was all good, except the guy said, man, you pronounced it wrong. It's Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> I go, what, the, what, the, what are you talking about? I mean, all of our phrasing musically, you can't say, da -ba -da, da -ba -da, and, and, and we'll go, uh, and, and, and change it to, duga -du, duga -du. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, that was my introduction. So we we had to change the whole thing, but but we won, and they paid us. And you know what the school wanted? They wanted that money. I said, "No, are you kidding me? That's my money." <laughs> so, it, uh, uh, it, but <laughs> that went to my tuition. But uh, yeah, Jimmy let me in there at night. And so at at two thirty in the morning, when the when the the mafia clubs would would close down, and I would go back to Philly, I would. Go in and and wood. Shed. I just loved the synthesizer. I was infatuated, just like I was three years old again. Wow! I said I got to know that man. I got to work on it. And uh, I mean, just started. I mean, they had a little, a couple tape recorders, little two tracks, and we'd bounce back and forth, get a lot of hiss on them. And uh, I met Garrett Brown, who invented the Steadicam. That guy. Uh, and and. He like kind of like introduced me to some New York guys, and he, I did my first New York sessions for him. Wow, which was unbelievable. But it, that, that that started the whole thing, and uh, you know, Gene Bianco, I met him uh, with the harp. Remember harp? Uh, he was such a rock and roller on the harp. He he played groove. He he did stuff. We did so many so many sessions and he was so rhythmic and uh you know going to the sessions with with Bacharach and phil ramon nobody did the rhythm like gene bianco and he was just he was an unbelievable uh i mean and he and he would make me play back the tracks when we would finish so it was he, he was just an inspiration so Anyway, that, that that kind of started New York, and and uh, then Phil introduced me to uh, my deal was I would teach him Moog synthesizer if he would involve me with the uh, the John Barry, the composer, 
and uh, the 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 Burt Bacharach sessions and 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 Quincy Jones that he would introduce me to his guys because of course Phil was is a was a legend is a legend and uh, so Phil it, the Moog was very difficult to do yeah and yeah. and I got a call one night at midnight. And he said, get your ass on the next plane. My girl's got you a ticket. Get over to Kennedy. I said, Phil, what happened? He said, man, they're all pissed off at me. I, I, I can't get this thing to work. <laughs> so I, I had to throw my, my pantyhose in a bag and, and, and get to London. And uh, then John Barry and I became very, very good friends. And, you know, we started doing... Uh, explosions and they you know and all the little beeps and things in his stuff because the Moog would do beeps very well yeah you know the I had little sequencers you know you could get I had a, a sequencer controller that could go from I believe it was 24 to 48 episodes or see you know things sounds before it would cycle back over and it was uh, you know that was when you, you got all of 24 or 48 if you had the sequencer joiner. I don't know, the little lights would flash over or something. But, <laughs> right. oh, man, it's like, like I'm, I, I, you know what? I gave that to the musical academy when we moved out of 24th Street. Uh, I gave the, the SSL console and all that and the U read time aligned speakers and amps and things, all of that to the musical academy. Because then everything's Pro Tools. Yeah. And and Brian McGee, my current genius associate, uh, you know, the guy never works for you. You work for him. <laughs> you know. Uh you know, it's 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 you know, you never own a boat. The boat owns you. <laughs> right. The mus the musicians own you. You're you know, you're nothing without your your guys. They make you or they break you. So uh, you know, it, it. I mean, I'm I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm just saying. Brian McGee is. I mean, the, the guy. He allowed me to do so much more work because we would finish a gig, we would agree on a mix, and then he would work all night. I would go and arrange and write for the next date the next day or in a day and a half, and, and, and he would be able to finish it. And uh, one funny thing was we did a, a thing, Mark Goodson's, uh, before he passed away, his hearing was going. Mm-hmm. He had tinnitus, but he said, he said, Ed, I love the triangle you put in. Now, the first, you know, I mean, you know, little kids play with triangles, but uh, George Devins played the best triangle and, and all the percussion on Bacharach dates. And, man, he made such music with the triangle. And so I loved it. I, I, I related to the triangle. So I said to Brian... Listen, we're doing we're doing some cues for the Price is Right and Mark loves triangle. So I I said this to Brian and I we had finished oh multi I, a couple hundred pieces of music okay, and we I overdubbed I believe it was I had done the overdubbing on the on the the the, the triangle, and I went out to write and I came back the next day, and I said. Well, let's let's hear what we have. <laughs> and I was, I, it almost shattered my glasses. The bra, the the triangle was so loud. <laughs> it was <laughs> because I don't know. Uh, you know, Goodson was not in the room, but Brian took it for religion that it was to be a loud triangle. It's now known as the Briangle. <laughs> and, and and Brian has never lived that down. That's how loud that. I mean, it would it would shatter glasses in the next room. It was that, but it was it was, it, it was great though. But I mean, we had to <laughs> we had to go and cut it down. So anyway, that, that happened. So anyway, uh, I want to back you up a little bit and talk about this huge body of music that you wrote 
surrounding the prices right some of the some of which the cues became even themes for other shows and you made such a sound using the moog and live instruments and that was, yeah. that was just such a an important sound and and bled into all kinds of popular culture yeah can well, you talk about those those and you cited the the musicians can you talk about the rhythm players that you had there and oh yeah um well there was of course Steve Gadd, and uh, uh, some of the names of the guys I'll forget. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to slight anybody, but I have names Heimers. You know, I just, uh, I don't have face Heimers. I know faces, but uh, Chris Parker was a great drummer. And, uh, uh, oh, what's the guy? One, one of the guys who went out to write music, he wrote a lot of the cues for, um, Maybe it was Seinfeld. Oh, wow. Uh, Mino uh, oh, what's his name? Minolta or something like that. Then there was uh, Steve Gadd came in. Mm -hmm. and, and Steve Gadd, of course, became just a legend, right? And uh, oh, one guy jumped off the, a building trying to jump into his apartment. He lost his keys. And he, and he fell down between two floors and broke his legs or mm -hmm. his ankles. And I, I forget his name, but he was a great drummer. Um, and there was, um, oh, oh, who's the guy out, out west that did it? Uh, oh, famous guy. He, he, he would stamp your chart. Uh, how, no, what was his name? Uh, oh, I forget his name. Ah, see, name Cyrus attacks me again. <laughs> uh, and they, they had, they weren't, were they the wrecking crew? It could be, yeah. And it was, it, it, or it, it wasn't the Muscle Shoals group. It was out out in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, and I so forget sure it. Somebody who's watching is gonna know who that is. Oh man, I, I, yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, they, <laughs> they call it shit for brains. Sorry about that. But uh, anyway, it'll, it'll. Hal Blaine. Oh yeah, Hal Blaine. Stinking Hal. He was, and then you know, okay, 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 then. Then Steve Gadd, you know, he, 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 he did some uh, – Richard Crooks, that who, that's who broke his leg. He, he jumped to a building and fell. Wow. Richard Crooks came in. I said, can you play the pedals? Of course I can. So they were – I mean, these were the, the early guys. And, and uh, 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 Gordon Edwards, remember the bass player? Yeah. I think he wound up somewhere. Maybe the bass lines on, on all those cues are so incredible. I think that's well, like the funkiest part of the cues. It's so great. Those those guys. Well, okay. So I, I was so lucky to have these guys. Uh, Steve Gadd, of course, went on to become the house guy for, I guess, uh, Steely Dan. I, I everybody. guess uh, everybody. everybody. <laughs> and and he got he got really healthy. Like I, I I'm not maybe it was with with with. Uh, 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 Simon and Garfunkel, maybe touring with Paul Simon. And I said, man, you look good. He says, I, there's nothing left to quit. All I do is work out <laughs> and eat good. I, there's nothing, that, that, I, I thought that was the best quote of, that I've ever heard. There's no, I have nothing left to quit. You know, no, no, none of the stuff, you know, nothing. I just, there's nothing left. Anyway, so he was great. And then, the the elect i said you know i i like i see i was big on the synth right mm -hmm. and they had a thing called the selena which was of course was the the little right. string yeah and that's what london called them selena and then the the uh oh what what's the 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 uh, the uh the the thing with tapes the Megatron, or whatever they call the it. Mellotron and the Mel Mel Oh, yes. The, and that, of course, the tapes that always break. So you spend <laughs> half your date fixing tapes. Anyway, yeah. so I resisted a machine because, but then, you know, I said, wait a minute. Who's the hot guy around? Sammy Marandino. Stinking Sammy, you know? And and I and he came in with the Lindrum, yeah, and it wouldn't work, and he <laughs> and he drop kicked it down the hallway, 
I mean, it went 30 feet. He said, ah, that piece of shit. So, but he, he got another one. And, and, of course, Sammy was, you know, always a good guy. And I'm sure that Lynn gave him a new one. He said, let's try it again. Uh, and he and he came. Well, you know, that distinctive sound of that sound and stuff, right? Yeah. That thing. And yeah. and he and a guy, uh, David Rosenberg, kind of filled in for Sammy when Sammy became too pretty and too famous to be available, you know? So it was, it was okay. But uh, you know, David Rosenberg, fabulous guy. I think he works for Apple now or somewhere, but he's a great, great friend. We, we, we called him ping ping because he pinged on the symbols. We always, I kept the sing symbols live and, and we would do the, the, you know, the, the rolls and the crashes and, and we would always set up a nice set of Zildjian's or pasties and, uh, you know, we could then tune the, the date to that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, your uh, symbols, you know, believe it or not, really color where you're taking your groove, you know, uh, sure. just, a, just a word about, about some of the genius Brian McGee brought about. We had the SSL and ABC got a new console and I grabbed a huge bunch of modules and Doug Oberkirker added them into the uh, automation of my SSL. So we had a big 56 in with automation on the console and Brian McGee learned the digital world. And of course we had, Links, because we did a lot of movies, mm -hmm. a lot of a, a lot of syncing of picture to the machine. So we had the link system. Yep. So we had some Studers around and uh, uh, a Mitsubishi. We went digital tape on the Mitsubishi 32. That's before the uh, 48 track Sony. Yeah. So I said, man, I need more tracks than 32. So. I don't know. They were getting, I don't know, half a million dollars or 250. I forget what the incredible amount was for the Sony 48. So I said, why do I stop there? I said, I got this, these wonderful 24 track analog two inch tapes. And they were, I mean, they were, we took very good care of our stuff. So I said, Brian said, I'll, I'll link some up. So, People would come in, man, how do you get that, that, that pop on the, on all, on, on these band tracks? I said, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> but what it was, was it was, we, we would put the analog punch of, of the saturated 856 Ampex tape, warm and full. And there comes that bottom again from the diapasons. And I, you know, and I love the punch of the, of the big pipe organ. And I said, man, I gotta get that. I gotta get that on the air, not as an organ piece, but as a groove, you know, like a, a, yeah. a theme, you know? So we had great bass players, you know, Frankie Centena and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and j just great, great Will Lee. Yeah. I mean, the, these guys made the bass at, a virtuosic instrument, you know, yeah. they, they didn't just play bottom. They, they played the hell out of it. Yeah. So, uh, it, but, but Brian and, and I, well, Brian, he was the engineer. Yeah. So the foot on the, on, on the, on the drums, be it live, be it a sample, be it a, uh, something that Sammy would invent and bring in and some of the pop, uh, the uh, delicate stuff would go on the 32 track digital with Apogee filters that made it really nice, but you got that crystal clear digital top. Yeah. And, 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 and that became a, a real, a real deal. And, it, and, you know, it, it, it was, we, when we went all digital, 
uh, out at our carriage house in New Row. Uh, Sammy's been there a bunch of times. So is that, so have the guys. You know, we we got out of Manhattan. You know, we would have our normal uh, wall of dogs, which would be the uh, you know Schnitzer and uh, uh, y- you know Roger Rosenberg and and those those are the, those are the the reeds. We would actually pre-soak their reeds, and I would tell them, listen, I'll suck your reed before you come in. So it'll be in the winter. You don't have to warm up your instrument. So, anyway, it was just part of the stupidity of of our language. But uh, and then the bone guys. Of course, you know, Mike Davis. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's only one guy had a warmer bottom. Uh, we called it, a, uh, it was a Butterfield on the, on the tuba. We called him Buttercup. And, and, and he put, I, I love the tuba. Along with electric bass or, or upright bass, you know, like a Ron Carter. Yeah. Ron played a, many dates we got along well and he always was mad at me because he told me i put the numbers of the measures in the wrong spot he said they're to be under i said well i put them over <laughs> <laughs> but that was always he hated me for that he said i can't even count and uh so anyway ron and i would always fight where the numbers went for the for the measures but I said, well, I, I, I put my numbers on the top. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll point to it. How's that, Ron? He said, ah, don't, don't talk to me. So, and uh, Quincy Jones would always call me Cotton because I had kind of light hair and white skin, and he called me Cotton. And uh, <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, well, man. Man, yeah. all, all, everything that all the musicians, I talked to several musicians about you today because I'm trying to gather information. Everybody only has glowing things to say about you. Tony Cadillac, who I, I know you've worked with many times. Uh, Cadillac, Cadillac, I love I him, he's man. you're watching right now, but he, oh. he was saying that you're just all positivity in the studio, and he also cited Brian as having the best headphone mix in New York City, hands down. Well, you know what? You know what? So many dates in London or LA or New York where before I started building studios, I said, wait a minute, you gotta be able to hear. And we had little, we had little boxes where the the guys could actually do their own mix at their desk, at their music stand. And, 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 and that was, I said, if they can't hear what they want to hear, how can they play it? Yeah. Yeah. and we got tired of having the Fender Roads from uh, Carol or, or SIR show up with, oh, well, only middle C and the A above it don't work. But you can work around that, Ed. Yeah. And so, anyway, it, it was just, you know, I got tired of that game of, well, is it going to work? They, you know, they they tried hard. You know, they, that's when the dates were like golden age. Everybody was running around town with trucks, you know, but... Uh, I mean, every, I'll, I'll tell you, every guy that came in there, we would have more fun than you're allowed to have with your clothes on. I mean, we, it was, it, we, we would laugh. Chris Bodie sat in there one day with, with, with Chris, Chris Kent and uh, Schnitzer said, man, I got a group called New West Horns. And Bodie was in that and he said, give us a chance. I said, okay, I got to give you a chance. Well, of course they, they blew me away. I mean, they, and they, and Mike Davis was in that group and, uh, they, it was just fabulous. But Bodie said to me one day, he says, you know, Ed, not five minutes passes in our dates before we start talking about women. <laughs> and, and I said, Oh, Chris, that is so sweet, man. <laughs> so he said, listen, we, I'm, my mother's in town. Can I bring her by one of the dates? <laughs> I said, well, we'll give her the casting couch inside the control room. She can sit there and watch her son play the high seas, you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so, of course, she's behind the glass, you know, the double, the big three-quarter inch double glass. And and we were in there. We are behaving. Ha, ha, ha. 
hello, Mrs. Bodie. How are you? So nice of you to join us. Within five minutes, I mean, it's a blue room. And <laughs> there's Chris slinking down in his chair. <laughs> So, I, I brought in a bar of soap. I said, whose mouth do you want to wash out first? So, but she was laughing at us. She said, Chris told me to be, that be take five minutes before you guys reverted to your normal ways. <laughs> but, but we all, we, ever, we all were just like sitting on our hands and, and, you know, like buttoning our lips, being nice to Mrs. Bodie. But anyway, so it was, it, it was so much fun. But no, we, we all, we all loved each other, man. I'll tell you, all the guys. We used a lot of French horns. I got, I, I got to say, you know, Jerry Peel. Yeah. And now his son is another great Peel. You know, it's it's, it's you know the band of appeal. It's uh, Jerry Banana and his band of appeal. <laughs> but but I mean Jerry's you know Jerry you know kind of jumped out and and uh, uh, Jeff Jeff Kivett you know. I know Jack yeah. His sister married Jerry Peel. I said, "Boy, that's incest if you ever heard it." You know. <laughs> so uh, I, every time I see Jerry, I, I I demand a few rips. You know, French horns rip. You know uh-huh. that that bow. You know that thing. So anyway, but his son's great. And let's see, just the guys, man. I mean. Uh, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, I was so lucky to have, you know, Lou Marini and, 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 you know, just Georgie Young. Yeah. And, and the guy, the, the old school, you know, where you couldn't go to the bathroom without calling the union, you know? <laughs> but, I, you know, I want to, I want to ask about you and these, all this music you wrote, you know, you wrote these cues and was the timeline crazy? The, to hear t- this this thing that uh, Tony was saying is that you never let this pressure get to you, but surely there was a lot of pressure with some of this stuff. And and were you ever under just crazy timelines? And oh yeah, always. But you know what? We had a rule. If you get an ulcer, we couldn't use you. You can't take it. You know. Right. And and so it was. But you know what? When when you're doing what you were born to do, my one frustration is we mentioned it early on. I didn't stay in Los Angeles and become the next Hans Zimmer. I think you did just fine being in New York. Oh, it was. Oh, it, listen, it was great because the news came out of New York. The sports came out of New York. Uh, I'd run out there with uh, Mark was generous with his jet and he would let me, you know, steal his Rolls Corniche or I I would steal it. And then he would tell me he couldn't use me because I stole his car. (laughs) (laughs) And you're still working on stuff. Oh, yeah. We're well, uh, Brian and I are working on a new show for uh, it's sort of it's sort of coming out of Los Angeles. uh, an old friend, uh, Nicole Brandon, uh, a great writer, mm. and uh, she is a is an idea girl. She's got a, a crew. Uh, I can't tell you the name of the show because I'm sworn to secrecy. But it's of course. they they have people in 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 Spain, France, New York, Atlanta, me in Hollywood, Florida. And she's in L.A. And we all Zoom together. And we're working on a score for a a girly show, you know. So we just, wow. you know, we just all get together and ovulate. But it's, it's you know, it's a very sensitive subject. And, uh, you know, it's, it's I, I, I've uh, I always got along well with, 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 with the girl shows, you know. It, it didn't bother me. Yeah. Um uh, all music for the View and all those other shows, and yeah, well, you know, I was lucky to have known Barbara Wawa, and she would show up at parties at Mark Goodson's, and and somehow he liked me. I don't know why, but you know, he said, "Ah, yeah, 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 come on by," you know, up his his house at Beacon, uh, you know that the uh, I think it's Beacon, you know that 
enclave of where you smell the money when you come down the street, right? <laughs> so, you know, Kurt Vonnegut would be at these parties and wow. Mike Wallace mm. and Truman Capote. And I mean, the guys, I mean, this is, I, I'd be in there, I'd be dumbfounded. And the, and the Picasso's on the wall and his Renoir. And I go, oh my. I, you know, I've died. I died and went to heaven. And Barbara Walters would be there and morally safer. So, I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. Bill Paley, before he passed away. And and yeah. just, I mean, the, the guys, the, the real silly movers and shakers, the guys that really ran the whole thing. And it was, a, Walter Cronkite would come by. and And it would be these dinner parties Mark would throw. And, and of course, I met Barbara. And then somehow, uh, Mark Gentile and Bill Getty were looking for a piece. And Mark said, listen, man, they're, they're, they're looking for like a, a groove. So I came back. I put Jimmy Bones on the guitar. And he said, man, I'm, I'm getting tired of listening to this shit. He said, I, I can't find anything. Ed, can you do something? So I did it, and it won. And then... Of course, that was fun, you know, so we got in, and uh, it was Barbara, and uh, I think Meredith Vieira was on that one, mm, you know, yeah. and, uh, uh, oh, I have to mention Roy Markowitz. Remember Roy? Yeah, I think so. He played, he, he programmed drums. I, maybe he wrote stuff, but he did, he kind of disappeared. I don't know what happened to him, but Sanborn... And I were buddies, right? Mm hmm And uh, he did that one of the – for Andy Lack, uh, West 57th Street. That was a, a show with Meredith Vieira and, I don't know, a bunch of other young guys. But I always liked sax because I played all these, all these nightclubs. We had a sax and a girl singer, you know? Yeah. So I met Sanborn, and and he came in, and I said, man, I said, and and then the, the sports themes were stiff and, and stupid, you know? Like, so I, and I said, man, it, we, and, and television themes were all, you know? Yeah. Uh, just like, you know, like a fanfare. Like, oh, here comes the queen. I said, wait a minute. So Sanborn, of course, is one of the great jazz cats, right? So he came in and and uh, did the solos on West 57. I mean, it, it it's still a magical piece of business. Mm. Uh, just just absolutely spectacular piece of business. Uh, but he he did that, and and then so I got hot at CBS for a while with Connie Chung. Remember Connie? And uh, Eddie Daniels played some liquor stick for us, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm, I'm mentioning these guys that come to mind. Like I said, I'm nobody without these guys, oh. you know. They, they they make you or break you. And, and you know, it, everybody that, that came in. I mean, just the guys, it it, it became, you know, the union is five minutes on every hour you get to walk out and, you know, do what you do for five minutes. And we would be about an hour in. We'd always be right near getting the phrasing down. And, we, and we'd say, guys, can we do one more? Well, they would stay in there past the hour, 20 minutes past, 30 minutes past. And then, no, we, I detect one thing we need to do. We've got to fix it. And, and Jimmy Hines, those guys. That, no, 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 Ed, we got to do one more. I said, do you want a break? No, no, let's get it right. They would they would stay there. So, you know, I wind up buying them lunch. Yeah. And, but, and, you know, you, you get what you give, and obviously you oh, really survive. So. Well, the, the, so the guys, I can't say enough for the guys. I mean, it's like I don't think there's, you know, you can read music, you can play the thing, you can be pro, and, you know, there's – Beautiful people in L.A. and beautiful people in London. But the New York guy, and of course, I lived there. And I saw these guys a lot of the time. And, and you know, it was, uh, 
what's what's funny is that you know when the thing started falling apart with the shenanigans of the Disney people trying to kill the organized labor, right? Which they pretty much have successfully almost tried to do. Funny, uh, Andy Schwartz. I'll mention his name again. Is now at the union. He said, "Ed, let's let's put our head." This is before this, just right before the the virus hit. He said, "You want to weigh in?" Because I, I I know you you fought to keep the union going. I said, well, we don't have a union unless we say we have a union and practice it. Right. right. So you know, and, and I'm not you know I'm not I'm not big on any one thing. And my guys are all good. I mean, it, it's unfortunate what happened to the business, but it it still could be great. You know, as uh, I think Maria Sch- Schneider the 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 wonderful jazz girl said, you know, no, no, it wasn't her. It was somebody else, but it makes us artists, not beggars to have a good basis of which to operate from. Sure. Yeah. I always remembered that, you know, because, you know, Hey, wait, you know, we'd always have a joke on the sessions, um, that, Hey guys, I'm not paying you this date because, hey, you know, just just tell them you play trumpet. And the uh, the uh, the uh, grocery store and the gasoline station will say, hey, hey, it's on us. It's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, right. <laughs> tell that to your mortgage. So anyway, we would always joke around about, you don't need money. You're a musician. So, uh, yeah, right. Sure, <laughs> Henry. So anyway, so listen. Uh, can you see where I am? I see you. Yeah. Can, this is my lagoon. Oh, it's beautiful. And there's the. You don't know. Ed is a. a uh, Ed is a passionate sailor, and he has one of the most enviable sailboats for, for real sailors. Swan oh. Forty Eight. Oh. I call it a Swanabago. You can oh. see my my wind vane up there, and I got them, my, Furuno and yeah. my track my track vision, so we can track our tracks anyway no it's a great boat i'm 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 very very grateful very very fortunate to have been able to get this boat and uh have uh you know a a wonderful uh wonderful partner helping me yeah well uh madame simard montreal you know ed thank you so much for talking to everybody today and you're 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 a complete treasure, and uh, I really, your music has been a, a tremendous influence on a lot of people, and certainly on me, a direct influence on the music that I write, and uh, uh, and it's fantastic. So well, you know, we well, thank you very much, man, and and you know, thanks for all that. Look, like like I said, it's 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 fun. To, it we still have more fun than we're allowed to have. You know, it's it's really a pleasure to write music and uh thank goodness my phone rings now and then and it's 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 okay you know it's okay there's a life out there and i you know i'm able to sail more now because it's crazy of course nobody's working right now but uh henry i look forward to seeing you when we can get out of here yeah uh i think it's looking like we got a five to eight day romp up the atlantic at the end of the month yeah and uh, I must say that, oh, oh, Stephen Raymond is a wonderful uh, art dealer, friend, the son of, of Madame Samard, and uh, he's going to be big. So you can buy your Picassos and your Renoirs from him. All right. <laughs> we'll all save our money, and uh, I'll plug my son Max at his new endeavor. I forget the name of that because it's new. Uh, he's a marketing genius with the with the uh, uh, he was with Social Code. I forget where he is now. And my son Rex is son uh, Rex is here. He's watching. Is he? Oh, fantastic! Well, he's 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 really a gifted sculptor. And you know, I almost put on my Instagram page Julian Kalehoff, who's thirteen. You know, it's like I go back to Mississippi. 
I walk in his house. He's got a guitar or a bass, or he's sitting at the piano. And he says, hey, I wrote a new song. You want to hear it? And I'm going, oh, my word. <laughs> and I, all, I had a picture I almost put in and, uh, uh, for the Instagram. I said, well, you know, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll just post it as one of the little special little guys. You know, he's, he's just, he's writing. Rex writes. Uh, Max, you know, became a writer, not a composer, but it's it's just great. And you know, I'm blessed with the family, with the little girls, uh, Celeste and the little stinking Marlin and Laura Kalehoff. So anyway, Henry, thank you so much, Ed. I want to see you in the north, man. Okay, all right. Have a great day. Okay, man. I love you guys. I'll, okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining me for this episode of The Right Key. If you enjoyed the episode, there's a lot more coming. Please click the subscribe and like buttons below. If you want to know more about me or our guests, you can find lots of information in the link just below the video. See you next time.